Thomas Sanchez, uh, his uh, new novel is uh, American Tropic. Thanks for being with us, Tom. Thank you for having me, Chauncey. Tom, I've always thought of you as the kind of writer who uh, always writes big, always swings for the fences in terms of literary ambition. Uh, are you comfortable with that characterization? Uh, I don't think ambition is the is the, the word I would use. I would think of it more of a an enterprise in the American project. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you're the author of uh, several distinguished and well-reviewed uh, novels, including Mile Zero, Rabbit Boss, uh, Zoot Suit Murders, Day of the Bees, and uh, my personal favorite, King Bongo. Um, and American Tropic is uh, another Key West novel. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, sort of a continuation of Mile Zero, which is a generation ago now. Tell us about the new book. Yeah, the new book is really set in Key West, like the first book. Um, Mile Zero that it follows, but it follows Mile Zero from uh, an entire generation later. Mm -hmm. When I first arrived in Key West in 1981, which is now seems like an ancient history, the novel uh, of Mile Zero was originally set in Mexico and California, and I was kind of chasing this book. But when I arrived in Key West, which was a fluke, I was only going to be there for a few days, and uh, I Landed on this little island, which was like a you know a speck of coral in the middle of nowhere, with no real landscape, uh, overdeveloped, uh, sort of a fishing town down on its luck. And uh, on the same day I landed, also was the day of the space shuttle being shot off in front in Florida, streaking across the sky. Uh, they busted a 17-year-old kid in a uh, cigarette boat full of uh, five million dollars worth of cocaine. And a raft of Haitian refugees came in, and half of the people on the raft were sunburned and, and dehydrated and dead. Uh, and I thought, my God, you know, I'm on this little island, which, as I say, is a speck of coral in the middle of nowhere. And most people think of Key West the, in the same way they would think of Paris, for example. It kind of looms large in the literary and popular imagination. In fact, the island of Key West is smaller than the airport of Miami. So it's, it's this tiny little stage set, and I realized that I was in this sort of Shakespearean moment. And I also realized that what was happening of the old Key West, the old Key West of the conchs and the fishermen and the spongers and the sharkers, that that was finished. I could see coming from California because I grew up in California, Pacific Grove where Steinbeck was, mm -hmm. where the canneries all left and the fishermen all left. And I could see the same thing was happening with Key West. They were moving the, the shrimp boat fleets offshore to different places, and this sense of Key West being a seaport was over. And what was happening, it was already a major smuggler town. I called it a marijuana municipality. And I kind of arrived there when that marijuana uh, uh, municipality was changing to a cocaine principality. Mm -hmm. And that was then, which was 1981. And then if you flash forward, when I went back to Key West literally 20 odd years later, I'm faced with a completely different Key West. I'm faced with the Key West of today, which is the Key West predominantly of kind of gangster realtors who have, who have raped the natural environment of the island. And in the old days, you would have the pirates, you know, who would be running and smuggling drugs and guns. Anything that's illegal, that, that island would be involved in it. But if you, if you outlawed Coca-Cola, I mean, Key West would smuggle in Coca-Cola. They don't care what it is. And I realized when I returned that something even more sinister was happening, is that Key West had been sold out to a kind of mass tourism, to not only these cruise ships coming in, but cruise ships that they are now called the mega cruise ships, which are bigger than like shopping malls. And basically they're shopping malls instead of on wheels or on the water. And they're immense, they're enormous, and they're disgorging like about a million people onto this tiny little island. And the, in, the environment was being destroyed. And already the environment was in trouble in Key West, very fragile. Most people don't realize that the only living coral reef that we have in North America is the coral reef offshore of Key West. Now, the statistics are done, and you can check it out. Within 50 years, that's going to be a dead coral reef. Uh, along with about you know 50% of all the coral reefs, not only because of, uh, of of the warming of the seas and the warming of the um, of the atmosphere, but because of the pollution, and especially when you're dealing with a place like Key West, where you have the Florida Bay on one side and you have the Straits on the other side, 
you have all of the insecticides, pesticides, everything that's being fleshed out of you know, the, the Everglades is killing off our last living coral reef. So I had the idea, Chauncey, that what if, what if the rage that people have inside of them, what if someone took it upon themselves to kill the people who are killing the environment, to even the score, to make it a level playing field? And that was really the flash, that was really the concept I had for American Tropic, was to begin it with that idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me a little bit about your principal characters. The principal characters are two, uh, although there's a host of extraordinary characters that have names like Hard Puppy and uh, Hogfish. Mm -hmm. But the main character, that is, uh, the male character, is a kind of a, a, a defrocked lawyer someone who's been fighting in the courts as an environmental lawyer, protecting the environment, and has been fighting all of these you know, enormous agri-corporations uh, that we have here in Florida, and trying to defend what's left of the natural environment, mm -hmm. but realizes when he's involved in the courts that the game is rigged, that there's no way in the end you're going to bring down these, these sort of like the subterfuge that goes on in terms of how the environment is being destroyed in Florida. I could go in to that at length, which I do in the novel American Tropic, because the main character is now really a defrocked lawyer, and he's fed up with the game. Uh, he becomes a drunk. He's down in Key West. What better place to become a drunk? But he even doesn't, there's a line in there where, where his wife, who runs a bar, is asked, well, your husband's a drunk. Why isn't he in the bar? And she said, because he's a professional. He doesn't need an audience. And what he does is that he's offshore as a pirate radio shock jock, mm -hmm. where he's in international waters, where he can call it for what it is, where he answers to nobody. He has an old trawler that he calls Noah's Lark because his name is Noah Sachs. And from there, he can really communicate his rage, which we call in the novel, the rages of Noah, against the destruction of the environment. So he's the male main character. He's white. Why do I say he's white? Because the main female character is a black lesbian homicide cop. And between the two of them, they hunt down this kind of very strange, very odd suit of bones. You know, Key West originally was called by the Spanish Island of Bones. Mm -hmm. And someone who looks like a, a very strange, odd, bizarre skeleton, uh, not a zombie, but something even more sinister in a way, because he's totally animated. And one by one, there are these very, very bizarre and grotesque and disastrous murders that are taking place and being discovered by someone they finally piece together is killing those who are killing the environment. And so this sense of fear begins to come up you know, out, of the, out of the real atmosphere of Key West. And anyone on the island can be the killer. And everyone on the island is suspect in American Tropic. Uh -huh. Wow. That sounds terrific, Tom. Uh, so it's a, it's a bit of a murder mystery, but, but you know, it's your book, so I know it's also literary. Yes. How do you weld those two? How do you keep one from swamping the other? That's always, uh, Chauncey, as, as you know, because I think uh, Chauncey Mabe is really the, the dean of Floridian critics for me. <laughs> and uh, we once did on Mile Zero, and you came down to Key yeah, West and, yeah. and really asked the, the most pertinent questions that I was ever asked about that oh, novel. Thank you, Tom. And you're just mentioning one that's also very important to me, is that how do you balance the mystery with, uh, you know, the literary? And I think, you know, if you look at, if you look at most of Shakespeare's plays, we're really de dealing with, with murder mysteries. Right. De we're dealing with deception. We're dealing with ghost incestuous, incestuous with ghost stories. And there's an artful way to do that, because if you're just a literary writer, then you're kind of doomed to one of those circles of hell where you're just circling the academy and you're being read by the academy. It's always been my feeling as a writer from when my first novel was written, Rabbit Boss, back about four generations of American Indians from the sighting of the cannibalism of the Donner Party all the way through the Eisenhower years, that a writer, why should you read a writer unless that writer has lived life, unless he's gone into life, unless he's challenged himself against life. And for me as a California writer originally, it really is the trail that was blazed by Jack London and by John Steinbeck mm -hmm. on one mm -hmm. side. And then on the other side, of course, you have, 
you have Kerouac uh, and you have Hemingway. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea that I had was the writer must really be a warrior of, of, of his own time and he must stand and deliver and deal, even if he's dealing metaphorically as I do in American Tropic, with the issues of our time. Okay. Thomas Sanchez, the new book is American Tropic. Thank you so much for being with us, Thomas. Thank you, Chauncey.